Hello, beautiful people. Now, the film industry is a industry that has more than its fair share of female pioneers. You have film directors like Lois Weber, uh, Alice Guy Blanche. I mean, the first split screen in film history was done by a film directed by a woman. You have scenario writers like Sarah Y. Mason, movie stars who went on to become producers like Gloria Swanson. Perhaps the most significant is Mary Pickford, who started um, her own studio with Douglas Fairbanks that became United Artists, which is still around today in one form or another. In animation, you have Lottie Ringiger, who did The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, but you also have a, um, Peggy Winkler, who I think is quite overlooked, considering her massive influence in the film industry. She, in a sense, gave Walt Disney his start in the industry. She was also involved with the Felix the Cat cartoons. She's a real hashtag girl boss if you ask me because you know she was an immigrant child she lost her mother when she was six years old she grew up in the kingdom of hungary in the also hungarian empire when she was nine years old however her father who was a tailor moved the family to new york and when she was 18 she was working for harry warner as his secretary Harry Warner is, of course, one of the Warner Brothers. Now, a few years later, a producer by the name of Pat Sullivan bounded into the Warner Brothers office and he was trying to sell his idea for a cartoon short series. The Warner Brothers turned this down and that could be a really pivotal moment in film history for reasons I'll go into. However, Henry gave his full blessing for Winkler, who was really enamored by the idea, to leave Warner Brothers and actually take up the role of distributing them herself. And so she ended up becoming Sullivan's distributor and Felix the Cat started to become known internationally. This was a pretty big deal because she ended up becoming the first female film distributor in Hollywood, if not the world. She was also really young. She was only 26 years old. And in February 1922, Film Trade Journal announced MJ Winkler leaves Warner's will market independent films. Now, of course, why did she use the initials MJ Winkler? Well, she was Margaret J. Winkler. And of course, it was to be more genderless. When asked many years later uh, what men thought of when they found out that the business person they were interacting with was a woman, she said that uh, they sometimes were scared, but they got over it. Fucking girl boss, what can I say? Her first offerings were the Pat Sullivan cartoons, but she was also distributing the Out of the Inkwell series by the Fleischer Brothers. Now, the Fleischer Brothers are perhaps most famous because they started the Popeye cartoons. See, she's kind of really, really a pivotal figure. Now, while the Felix cartoons were incredibly successful, both in the United States and in the UK, at this time in Kansas, however, a budding entrepreneur by the name of Walt Disney, he'd been trying his hand at filmmaking and the animation industry, and he was about to pack it in. He put away his uh, animation stand when he got a telegram from Margaret J. Winkler. He had been trying to sell his idea for a half live action, half animated series called The Alice Comedies, loosely, loosely based on Alice in Wonderland, and getting nowhere until Margaret Margaret J. Winkler, perhaps because, you know, with the argy bargy with uh, Pat Sullivan, said that she was not only excited by the idea, but if Disney could produce the first episode of the series, she would advance him the money for the rest. And that made Disney ecstatic. His brother, Roy, had tuberculosis at the time, and Disney rushed in to see Roy, waving the telegram in his hand. He was so excited, and they got to work on the Alice comedies. This was a very, very pivotal commission in the history of film, in the history of animation as well. Not only did you have Walt Disney, you had, of course, his main animator, Ub Iwerks, who was a genius. You also had Hugh Harmon working for him, who would end up being one of the co-directors of the very first Looney Tunes cartoon. And underneath him was Frizz Freeling, who would go on to be Warner Brothers' longest serving Looney Tunes director. One really wonders how cartoon history could have been different if Harry had have done a deal with Pat Sullivan. And, there, you know, when you think about it, there would really be no Bugs Bunny, no Mickey Mouse, there would have been no Daffy Duck, no Donald Duck, no Goofy, no Sylvester the Cat, no Tweety Bird. It could have all been very different if it weren't for Peggy Winkler. The Alice comedies, they were in a sense the birth of the Disney studio, but it wasn't an auspicious start. While they were, while they ended up making money, they were a bit slow. All they really had going for them was the fact that Alice was not a damsel in distress. She was a young girl, but she could hold her own. In fact, uh, there's this one scene tacked by a bunch of tigers and there's a fight off screen. Then she come and then the tigers run off and she comes out. 
dusting her hands triumphantly. I like that. They weren't the greatest, and Winkler actually got quite hands-on. She insisted on editing the uh, comedies herself, and she must have known what she was doing. Together with her chief salesman, Charles Mintz, the Winkler Pictures Company had become the biggest shorts distributor in the world in 1923. Not just in the United States, in the world. She must have known what she was doing. However, however hands-on her role was with the editing, her kind of, she would become less hands-on as she actually got married to Charles Mintz and he soon became responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the company as Peggy Winkler moved into the more traditional role, unfortunately, of just being a mother. I can't help but think of a scene, there's a Felix cartoon called Felix Turns the Tide that I feel like really prefigures what was going to happen in her life. Granddaughter Jeannie Mintz insists that uh, Peggy had a very active social life during these years. She actually really enjoyed jazz music, which makes her sound quite a bit avant-garde. Um, and she also partied with, you know, the rich and famous, you know. A curious bit of information, um, her, her brother-in-law actually started working for the company and was sort of the liaison with Disney over in Hollywood. But he took on the professional name of George Winkler. I suppose so people thought, I suppose to keep up appearance. I don't know, I just found that interesting. But she also kept a very thick scrapbook of uh, all the uh, postings about her time in the industry. Which Jeannie thinks means that, uh, which together with the fact that she didn't actually talk to her, to her children or her grandchildren about her, um, about her time in the industry, suggests that while she was very proud of her accomplishments, and at such a young age, she was only 30 when she left the industry. I mean, she had completely changed the animation history at only the age of 30. That's it's quite impressive. She was clearly quite proud of her accomplishments, but her granddaughter thinks that the fact that she didn't speak about it suggested that there was probably a lot of pain about her decision, maybe a bit of regret about being forced to leave. In spite of that, uh, Peggy Winkler did have a very full and active life, even though uh, Charles Mintz passed away when I think, uh, I think it was 1939. Um, she was very involved in her social life, in volunteering right up until her 90s. She was in her 90s. I think what is indisputable is firstly the huge impact that she had on the film and animation industries, but secondly, I think that she should be praised, and I think that she really is a massive inspiration, because it cannot have been easy for her to do that. Remember, she was an immigrant. She was a woman in a male-dominated industry, and she held her own. I think that she should just be treated as an inspiration. And on that thought, I'll leave you. Till next time, I'm Constantine. Please stay sublime. Bye. <laughs>